Welcome to the Skype Operations Framework video on Audio Quality Investigations with CQD. Hello, my name is Justin Walker and I'm a Senior Service Engineer with the Customer Health and Escalation Support Group. Today with me is Mel Fry. Mel, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks Justin, glad to be here. My name is Mel Fry and I'm a Service Engineer with the Skype for Business Product Group. This session is part of the wider Skype Operations Framework Training. We encourage you to review the Skype Operations Framework Overview recorded training. Let's recap on why we created the Skype Operations Framework and what it is. The shift to the cloud changes the way that Skype for Business is delivered. Moving from on-premise deployments to online deliveries, we have been asked to provide practical guidance to assist with planning, delivering, and operating Skype for Business online. We created the multifaceted approach of the Skype operational framework to provide that practical guidance and associated tools and assets, along with a common language of phases and stages to help drive a common understanding of the Skype for Business online lifecycle. To help folks get on board, we have the Skype Academy to host sessions like this one, and also technical product training as well as multiple feedback mechanisms. SOF is a living framework. We are working on updates on a regular basis, so please visit our site to get the latest material. As we're going to find out in today's session, the Skype Operations Framework is a living, breathing framework for Skype for Business Online. We will be adding new content and working on updating delivered assets. We will be updating the training material to cover major updates, but we encourage you to always be working with the latest assets which may have been released since this overview session was recorded. This is video 5 in the SOF CQD video series. We will be going over audio quality investigations with CQD. Audio Quality Investigations with CQD. So what will we cover in this video? Well, we're going to look at how to investigate buildings and subnets. We're going to look at the difference between calls and streams. And then how to identify protocols like TCP and UDP and what's being used in your environment. Also, we'll compare things like wired, wireless, VPN, and split tunneling. And also how outside or internet users are performing as compared to users inside the corporate network. In this demo, we're going to look at building and subnet methodology. We're going to start at an all-up number, and then we're going to dig into things like wired versus wireless, reflexive addresses and how to use them, knowing the difference between streams and calls, and also looking at protocols such as TCP and UDP. So when you first log in to CQD, you will be at the summary report page. The first thing we need to do go to the detailed reports page by clicking this link at the top and then selecting detailed reports. Once you're in the detailed reports view, you'll be presented with an all audio streams report. This shows all audio streams, the number of poor streams, and the percentage of poor streams. And this is where we're going to start today. We're going to click on all audio streams here to open the sub report. Once the sub-report loads, you'll be presented with two different reports, a managed and unmanaged report. The managed report has audio streams for users that are wired connected to your corporate network. The unmanaged streams on the right are Wi-Fi networks or people at home or in public locations. Since managed networks are connected to your corporate network and are wired, these should perform much better than unmanaged networks. Unmanaged networks include things like Wi-Fi and public locations like a Starbucks or home users. So that bucket we expect to perform a little bit worse. Now if we see a problem in either the managed or unmanaged space, we can dig in a little bit deeper by creating some custom reports. I'm going to go back to all audio streams and I've preloaded some reports for us to use today. Let's assume that we found some poor streams in the managed report. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at the streams by building report that I've created here. The dimensions are simply the second building name, the audio stream count, and the audio pour percentage. Now once I've saved this, we're going to wait for it to load a moment. What this report does is it shows us by building for the subnets that we've uploaded into CQD, the number of streams and the poor percentage. So if we have certain locations that are having trouble, we can find them right here. So for the purpose of this demo, let's look at CPIDC. This building has 44,000 streams 
and a poor percentage rate of 1.2 percent. I'm going to scroll over to streams by building and all I did here was filter down to that building and add a couple more parameters. One is obviously the building name and second is the type of network connection and third is the subnet. So I'm going to go ahead and sort by audio stream count so we can see the subnets that have the most audio streams. This first row indicates that the most of the audio streams are coming off of Wi-Fi in this 10.0.0.0 subnet. And their audio poor percentage is at 1.4%. Now for a wired client on the same subnet, we're seeing an audio percentage of 0.7% for poor calls, but only six, almost 7,000 streams. So this tells us the wired network is performing well, but there may be something more to look into on Wi-Fi. So let's take a look at Wi-Fi across the building. We may notice that certain Wi-Fi subnets have problems where others are performing well. So all we have to do is type Wi-Fi in the second network connection detail box and it will filter us down. Now we can scroll through and look at all of the Wi-Fi subnets for this building and what their statistics are. So this building actually appears to be performing very well. At the worst, it's at 1.4% of poor streams, which is really great for Wi-Fi performance. Now that we know that Wi-Fi is performing fairly well in this building, let's take a look at the different bands of Wi-Fi and see how they're performing. So what I've done here is created an additional report and filtered again down to the building. And we're looking at the two different Wi-Fi bands. So let me show you the dimensions, which is just second Wi-Fi band, and then the same counts and percentage numbers, as well as filtering down to that building that we were looking at earlier. Let this load up here for a moment. And what we can see is that if you're using the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is a little over half of the streams for this building, you're at 1.7% poor streams. However, if you're using the newer 5 gigahertz band, it's almost a half a percent of poor streams, which is performing really great. So another thing we can look at is the transport type, either TCP or UDP. We know that TCP performs poorly compared to UDP when it comes to real-time audio. So if we take a look at the all-up number, what we're seeing is 15,000 streams, but they have a poor percentage of 7.5%. That's not very good. If we look at UDP traffic, we're seeing half a million streams or so and a poor call percentage of 1.4%. So those folks that are using TCP are suffering. So that can usually be due to a firewall or ACRA rule. And what you can do is you can add that to the building report and then find out where are your users actually using TCP. So this report shows us where TCP is happening. And you can go through and say this is building number one and we're seeing TCP usage there so we can engage the network team and investigate why. Now we can make that job a little bit easier for the networking team to find either firewall rules or ACLs by adding the subnet to the same report. So this is the same report as before except for I've added the subnet so now we know that in this building, building number one, we can sort by these audio stream numbers and give the networking team the actual subnet the calls are originating from that are being failed over to TCP. This is a quick and powerful way to make the experience much better if users are using TCP. Lastly, we're going to go over this reflexive report here. The second reflexive local IP is your public IP. This is what the server sees as your non-natted address. So when you're looking at your internet egress, let's say you have five buildings, but they all egress out of the same um, egress point, you can create a report based on the second reflexive local IP to see how that internet egress point is performing. So here we have our dimensions, which are just the month, the second reflexive local IP, the audio stream count, and the audio poor percentage. Now I filtered down to only include UDP because for TCP we don't actually see the reflexive address. We'll only see the reflexive address of the load balancer. 
So you need to remember that this is only used for, for UDP. But this can be a handy way to look at different egress points for internet access for your sites. One last note, as you're using these reports, please remember the definition of streams versus calls that were covered in video two. Remember, a single call has multiple streams, and this goes for both audio, video, and, and possibly uh, application sharing as well. Next, we'll talk about VPN and external users. When we discuss a VPN, we need to know, is it a client-based or site-based VPN? Is the VPN flag being set by the client-based VPN solution? And is split tunneling or media bypass, or in the case of our article here, bypass double encryption enabled? When discussing client-based versus site-based VPN solutions, we need to think about the fact that a site-based VPN solution is generally a hardware device deployed on the perimeter network of a company's satellite office. This means that each individual user doesn't have to perform any actions to get access to corporate infrastructure. It also means that every user's computer is not aware of the fact that they're on a VPN connection. When looking at a client-based VPN solution, we need to know that it's generally a piece of software installed on the user's machine, and that users generally have to perform some action to initiate connection to the corporate resources. Direct access by Windows is actually one of the few exceptions to that rule. It's designed to be sort of an always-on VPN connection. When we look at VPN connections, specifically client-based VPN connections, we need to know that it is incumbent upon the client software to report to the host operating system that it is a VPN connection. If the client software doesn't report that it's a VPN connection, the Skype for Business client cannot know that it's a VPN connection also. In that case, any of the calls they make will not be correctly annotated as being a Skype for Business call over a VPN. When we talk about split tunneling or media bypass or bypassing double encryption, what we're really talking about is the fact that the Skype for Business client automatically encrypts all the media streams that leave it. If we then send that traffic over a VPN solution, we're double encrypting our traffic. In the case of an audio call, it's especially critical that the traffic arrives in as timely a manner as possible. Just a half a second delay within an audio call can cause confusion on either end. When we start talking about inside versus outside users, what we really mean are users inside the corporate managed network and users that are outside the corporate unmanaged network. Some examples of outside users are home users, users in a coffee shop, users at a hotel. Next, I'll show you a demo where we look at VPN users and inside versus outside users. Let's start by taking a look at all calls for the last three months, along with their poor percentage and the count of their total and poor streams. We can see that the x-axis has the months, the left y-axis has the count of streams, and the right y-axis has the percentage. In the month of November for this tenant, we had a 1.4% poor call rate. That's out of 13 million calls, and that was 97,000 of those calls being marked as poor. If we look at VPN data, where the first user is on VPN, and that first user is the caller, we can see that they have about a 15% poor call rate. That's roughly 1,500 calls out of 27,000. If we look at the situation where the second user is on VPN, that's the person being called, we see that we've gone up quite a number of streams and that our poor call rate has gone down by percentage. We're a 9.6% poor call rate instead of 15%, and that's 2,722 calls out of 167,000. If we then take a look at the data, where neither user is on VPN. And what I want to show you here is one bit about the VPN flag that we mentioned earlier, and that's whether or not the client-based VPN solution will show whether it is or is not on a VPN. So what we've got here is I've filtered by where the second VPN is not true, and the first VPN is not true, and that first and second is the caller and the callee. If I expand this, you can see that we've also got a field for blank here. And that's when the client doesn't report. And that could be an operating system that doesn't support it, so it doesn't have that flag, a mobile phone, something similar to that. So we're looking at only where it's not true, which means that we're getting falses and blanks. So where neither user is on a VPN, well, we can see that our poor call rate drops quite dramatically down to 1.363% and that it's by far the most volume of any of the calls that we've had. 
13 million calls compared to 167,000 and that 27,000 from the first. Next, let's take a look at internal versus external users. We call those inside versus outside or managed versus unmanaged. How we can tell if a network is managed is based on the subnet upload into cqd.link.com. So if we scroll over here, we can see that for inside calls, where both users are inside, the number of streams that we have was 248,000 with a poor stream percentage of 0.7. If we scroll over a little bit more, we can see that in the call, where one user was external and one user was internal, the number of streams that we have goes up to 5 million, and our poor call rate also creeps up a little bit from 0.7 to 1.1% for poor stream. If we then look at where both users are external in a call, our stream count goes up to 8 million, and our poor stream percentage also creeps up to 1.6%. What this is telling us is that when both users are internal, our calls are 0.7% poor call. Um, we've talked about streams versus calls, so we can equate that roughly. We start looking at, at places where we start losing management of the network, we can see that our poor stream percentage climbs up. Poor streams equate to poor calls, poor calls equate to poor user experience. So a quick recap of this demo. We looked at all calls. We, had, we found our average poor stream rate. We looked at all the streams where one or the other user was on a VPN, and also all the streams where neither user was on a VPN. And what that showed us was that we had a much lower percentage of poor streams when neither user was on VPN. If we scroll a little bit more, we can quickly recap internal versus external. We can see that when both users are on a network that we control and manage, we have 0.7% poor call or poor stream rate. And when both users are on a stream or on a network that we cannot manage, we have a 1.6% poor stream rate. Next, we'll take a look at the inside versus outside stream details. As you can see, we're filtering on the inside court pair. We have options of inside, 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 outside, and outside, outside. Here's a summary of what we've covered in this session. The methodology, streams versus calls, TCP versus UDP, wired versus wireless, VPN, and external users. Next, we'll discuss monitoring endpoints with CQD. Please consider contributing to SOF. Let us know what does and doesn't work. Are we missing anything? Are things incorrect? This or any other feedback, please leave at skypeoperationsframework.com backslash feedback. Feel free to discuss SOF with your peers and with the SOF team. Learn more about how you can apply SOF to your products and how other folks are doing it with theirs at aka.ms backslash SOF community. In order to stay up to date, please leverage the following resources. The first link points to our SOF website, where you can download all of the SOF material. The second link points to our blog. We recommend you look at it on a regular basis. Or even better, configure your RSS reader if you're using one to stay informed about new blog articles. Finally, the last link points to our training site, where you can find the latest trainings on SOF as well as any technical trainings.